Hi, 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 it's Bernie here from sunny San Diego. This is our latest video and today I'm going to show you how to add a second network interface adapter, a second Ethernet adapter to your Ansel Nano. So that is cool stuff. So you see my Ansel Nano here, it's named um, Daffodil and I go to the network tab and I actually have BR0 and BR1, two physical network interface controllers, both Ethernet, one gigabit Ethernet, um, both on my Nano. So how do you do that? One is built in, that is the BR0. The other one is connected via a USB 3, two gigabit Ethernet adapter. You can get one on Amazon and the link is down below in the description of this video. Um, just get it on Amazon and use it with your Ansel Nano. So how do I do all that? Um, I'm logged into Daffodil here and, um, and I can do an IP address show, um, which gives me all my IP addresses um, and um, we have the BR0 here, right, which is our, our you know, built-in interface adapter, and that's connected to Eth0, which is the Ethernet 0. And then the one that came up with the adapter, um, the USB to Gigabit Ethernet adapter, it's called ENP0, uh, ENP1S0U2. So you see that here, um, and then and then the BR1, which is here, that's connected to that one. So um, what you have to do is you log into your Ansel, you go to etc sysconfig, e etc sysconfig, and then network interfaces, uh, network scripts. So you have a few files here, and the ones that are important is this one here. Um, that's the config file for the new interface that came with um, with the adapter and then also the BR1, right? Before you do that, you need to tell OVS. So we have the open V switch, which is a piece of open source software um, that we're using and the command to control it is called OVS Vuskuddle. <laughs> and, um, and then you need to add the BR1. Right. I'm not doing it right now because it's already um, been added, um, but you run that, um, please, before you do anything else, because the BR1 just needs to be added. And you can then do an OVS Vuskuddle show. It shows you um, our two bridges here. There's also an experimental XXX in here. Don't worry about that one. But the BR0, BR1 are here. And you see the BR1 is connected to this here. That is the second interface that we got when we plugged in the USB to Ethernet adapter. Um, in order to get that one going, you have to type, and I did that before, so that's why it's showing up here. Um, but if you do it yourself, you need to run OVS, Uskuddle, and then add bridge and BR1, right? So, and then, EN P0, P1, S0, EU2, and you run this command, and and through that, this port is gonna be added to um, BR1. So um, what you then need to do is, in the syscon, in the etc sysconfig network scripts, you will find the S0. So what I did is I copied the ETH0 to my, well, wait, wait, wait. Um, the ETH IFCFG dash ETH zero, and I copied that to IFCFG dash, and then your new interface name, which is EN P1 S zero U2. So you copy that over, and once it's copied over, you edit the new file. CFG and then that new file here 
and then um, you need to you need to put in that name here because after you copied it it will just say F0 so you need to replace that one with the correct interface name and you need to make it BR1 not BR0 right when you copy it it says BR0 and you need to put in your MAC address of the new interface so how do you find the MAC address um, you just say IP adder address show and then and then ENP1S0U2 and then it gives you the the MAC address right here under the link ether um, section all right and then also you copy over the IFCFG BR0 to IFCFG BR1 right I'm 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 not copying it right now I just show it for you because I copied it before and then in the br1 file um, you do the same thing you replace br0 with br1 uh, you replace the MAC address with your new MAC address and then you could either do DHCP or in my case I made it a static um, IP address and uh, you can make those settings also in Ant-Man in the network settings uh, later on or you can change them in Ant-Man and then after you've done all that, um, all you need to do is a system CTL, system CTL restart network. And with that, the network restarts with the new configuration. And then, and then you go to Antman, um, see your dashboard here. And then you go to the network config and then you see both um, network interfaces here. And then if you have the SDN functionality, depending on your Ant-Man plan that you have, um, you can create VLANs, virtual networks, and uh, you can say what interface they're on and all these type of things. And um, yeah, you have two network interfaces and that's the basis for using it as a firewall, which I will show in one of the next videos. Um, so you could use one NIC for the incoming traffic and the other for the outgoing traffic and use your Nano as a firewall device um, using some software, PFSense, OpenSense, or OpenWRT. Um, actually, we're going the route of OpenWRT because that is very well available for the Nanos and for the ARM architecture, <clears throat> PFSense and and OpenSense are more limited and, and, and more made for the Intel architecture. So they would run on the Ansel 1 and Ansel 2 devices. For the Ansel Nano, OpenWRT is a great solution and uh, watch out for that in one of our next videos. Um, but for now, see that you have um, two ethernet adapters here and obviously you can connect more, right? So the, the Nano has uh, two USB 3 ports built in. So you could plug in another one which gives you three NICs and um, just use a USB hub and have as many network interfaces as you like. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Talk to you soon. Bye.